This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and I know you've been waiting for this one. So many of you have asked for it. This is the Dell XPS 15. Again, this is the 2017 version with Intel KB Lake 7th generation CPUs and NVIDIA 10 series Pascal graphics. So a nice performance boost in the graphics department, a little bit of a boost in the CPU department, but modernization is always a good thing. As you can probably tell already just from looking at this, it's the same exact casing. A lot of other things remain the same. We're going to look at it now. You know what, even for me, this probably won't be a very long video because so much is the same as the last generation model that we reviewed and we even did a follow-up long-term review on it. Same aluminum casing right here, CNC machine alloy with your kind of Oreo look, the black on the sides, the bottom is the same as well here. It doesn't show fingerprints too much. You can see some here because I've been handling a lot and disassembling the poor thing, but you've got your ventilation here. You've got your rubber feet. It's fairly easy to take it apart. And we've got two eh, average speakers here and here, not really different from the last generation. They're not the worst I've heard, but they're not fantastic. It's not like multimedia powerhouse speakers. They're adequate is what I would call them. The last generation was something of a gamer because it had NVIDIA GTX 960 M graphics. Well, this time we have GTX 1050 graphics with four gigabytes of GDDR, GDDR5 RAM inside. So it makes it more capable, certainly than the last generation, even though that's the lowest animal in the lineup for NVIDIA's performance line, which has the 1050, the 1050 Ti, the 1060, the 1070, and the 1080. So a true gaming laptop, it's not, but you'll see some gaming visuals. It's actually moderately capable, as long as you don't expect this to play Witcher at 4K resolution or even 1080p at high. It can't really do that. Low, that's about it, the best. Continuing the sameness, the ports are the exact same on the side. Here, as you can see, we have traditional USB 3.0 ports. We still have the Thunderbolt 3 port here. Now, interesting thing, because Dell says that this has two lanes of PCIe instead of four, which we would expect from full power Thunderbolt 3, yet they claim 40 gigabyte per second speeds and is bi-directional. That's a little bit confusing there because you wouldn't think it would be 40 gigabyte per second, but it is two lanes and not four, not enough lane on room on the motherboard for four lanes, they claim. So uh, there's not enough in the way of Thunderbolt peripherals right now to really say, you know, how the performance is on, unfortunately, at this point. So I'm just going to have to wait and see. Inside, things are the same, too. So if you like the last generation, that's great. If you're hoping for more key travel and, and better key feel, well, sorry, no, not happening. It still has the same exact keyboard with 1.3 millimeters of key travel. It's not my favorite keyboard. It's not terrible, but it just has that Dell kind of short, abrupt, harsh feel when you press on. Very firm keyboard deck. It's, it's responsive enough. Again, it's just a, li a little bit punishing on the fingers when you type on it. And I'd like a little bit more travel. I know they're trying to make this as thin as possible, but for a 15.6 inch kind of workstation powerhouse machine, I I'd put up with a slight bit more thickness just for that keyboard travel. Something new though is the Synaptics fingerprint scanner right here. So you have Windows Hello login using the fingerprint scanner there, which is nice. That's a modern touch and it's competitive with other machines in this price range and this size range on the market. Still the same carbon fiber finish interior that I love the look of. It does pick up some fingerprint oil. So you will have to clean it once in a while if you want to keep it pretty. And we have the same precision trackpad, which when it first came out in the XPS line was a revelation because Windows trackpads were in such a starry, sorry state. And now we've seen others, uh, including some of the more recent Synaptics full feature trackpads. And I have to say, I like some of those a little bit better than the precision, but it's a pretty decent trackpad. So opening up the XPS 15 is just like opening up the last generation, which is to say lots of little Torx T5 teeny screws. Here they are teeny little things. And underneath the ID flap over here, there's two Phillips head screws because we all feel better when we use different kinds of screws, don't we? It's a little inconvenient, maybe because this is such a you know long screw here. They really didn't have that in readily available with the Torx head. Anyway, that is what it is. When you take it off, start from the back, it's easier, and it's got some tenacious plastic clips, so it's going to take a good yank. I tried working the guitar pick around the edges of it. Didn't really work so much as just giving it a yank, so... There's that. Inside, we have the new larger 97 watt hour battery, which is close to the legal limit for flying on airplanes. If, for those of you who are wondering about that, 100 watt hour, you know, and above, nope, you have to check it in luggage. You can't take it on board the plane. That's why that exists. Two RAM slots right here, DDR4, 2400 megahertz RAM. 
And this is a 16 gig model and it comes with two 8 gig modules. I know some of you are wondering about that and calling up Dell and asking whether you get a single 16 or two 8s. You get two 8s, folks, and that does give you dual channel mode, which helps when it's running on integrated graphics. You get better performance for that. Here is our SSD. We have a 512 gig NVMe PCIe SSD in the M2 slot. With the big battery configuration here, there is no hard drive base, so this was the only drive in this configuration. So this is a light on brand SSD. You can see from the benchmarks it does okay. I know there's been a little brouhaha on the net with some of you saying, oh, I really want the Samsung, it's fast, and then I got the Toshiba. Well, here's even a light on. Imagine that. Um, honestly, it's fast enough. Your killer Wi-Fi card is right here, 1535AC. As ever, for some reason, killer's drivers lately have been kind of dubious. So Dell already has killer driver update on their website. Go get it, because I did notice the connection dropping once in a while. Just stopped. And then, you know, I'd click on it and start right back again. By the way, 32 gigs of RAM would be the maximum with two slots because 16 gig modules are the largest that are currently available. We have two fans here, CPU and GPU, heat sink pipes right here with the CPU and GPU underneath. Perfectly adequate sizing, honestly, for a machine with this level of graphics and the quad-core CPU inside. So there are the internals. The displays are also the same as last generation. Uh, the base model is a full HD 1920 by 1080 matte display, and it's a very nice display, and has a perfectly reasonable resolution, even at 15.6 inches. And the real showstopper is the 4K display. Again, that's the same as the last generation, is a sharp IGZO 4K display with IPS like 170 degree viewing angles and very high color gamut. Now, last year, the, 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 the 4K XPS 15 drove me a little crazy because Dell's color tuning was not the best. It was pretty hard to have it not look a bit garish. So if you want to do serious professional photo editing, like I like to do video editing, it was a bit hard to work with, even with Dell Premier Color having a variety of color settings and using the color perimeter and all that sort of thing. Well, this year's model, they've done a much better job with color tuning, and it just looks flat out beautiful. And indeed, it's high color gamut more than sRGB. You've got 99% of Adobe RGB, which is pretty darn impressive. Dell claims 100%, hey, we'll give them that 1%, and 94% of NTSC. It is a stunning panel. It's a beautiful panel. It's also glossy, and it's covered with Gorilla Glass NBT, if you get that 4K panel. So you will have some glare. Dell claims 350 nits of brightness. We measured 305 with IGZO panels because of their interesting color power management. Rather, it's, it can be a little hard to get an exact reading on it, so, okay, close enough. A 305 nits, that's quite good, so it's bright enough to combat glare. All in all, it's a stunning display. It costs you several hundred dollars more as an upcharge. And let's talk about pricing. You can get an XPS 15 for just $9.99, but it's pretty defeatured. There is no dedicated graphics on that model, just Intel HD 630 integrated graphics. You're looking at a Core i3. It is the 45-watt quad-core... CPU family, at least, and again, seventh generation Intel Kaby Lake. And it has a hard drive with just a little 32 gig caching SSD to speed things up. It doesn't have a boot SSD. Also has a smaller 57 watt hour battery inside because they have to make room for that hard drive caddy to an half inch hard drive that there's not room for. Otherwise, if they use the 97 watt hour battery that is in our configuration, what we have here is a go to town nice, although you could even, I suppose, make it more expensive, a little over $2,000 model. It has the 4K display. It has the Core i7 7700 HQ, 45 watt quad core CPU, 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM, it has two 8 gig modules, and we have a 512 gig PCIe NVMe SSD. Now I know that some of you have been talking about, oh wow, it doesn't, I didn't get a Samsung, I got a Toshiba, the speeds aren't so great. Well guess what, there's another player right here. This, we have a light on SSD in here, and you can see the, the speeds that we got on. It's pretty decent. Honestly, they're all going to be in theory, so fast that I don't think anybody's going to notice the difference, but clearly Dell sells a lot of these and all of the XPS models, and they have to source a lot of different SSDs. I don't think there's going to be any guarantee as to what brand SSD you get inside. Considering that this is a very thin and light metal-clad laptop, the heat isn't too bad. I'm, we'll show you some thermals here when running the Unigine Heaven graphics benchmark, which is pretty much like playing a modern demanding 3D game. It gets pretty hot there, 116 degrees Fahrenheit at the hottest point, and 90, 
98.6 is human body temperature. So that will certainly feel hot, exceeding human body temperature by that much. If you're doing everyday normal things, if you're using Photoshop, it does not get that hot. The fans are audible, certainly when you're working it hard, but they're small. They just can't possibly make all that much noise to fill a room like a gaming laptop can. So noise is not actually that bad on it. But if you're working it really hard, if you're exporting 4K video in Premiere Pro, or if you're playing games, on, you'll certainly hear the fans. But like I said, nothing screechy, I'm certainly quieter than something like the 14-inch Razer Blade, which is a competitor to this, obviously, around the same $2,000 price point with even faster GTX 1060 graphics. But the price you pay there is the thing is a little vacuum cleaner compared to our XPS 15 here. But then again, the blade also performs better in games too. Gaming on this, you know, you're best sticking to low to medium settings. You're playing the most demanding current games, Fallout 4, The Witcher 3, those sort of games. You can see we have a variety of games that are that are playing here. Most of them I've set to either lower medium settings, 1080p resolution. It really kicks booty here in Battlefield 4 though, where we can actually raise the settings up to medium and even high and exceed the, the refresh rate, which is 60 hertz of the display. So and that, that's a great improvement over the 960 from last year, certainly in that game there. Battery life is really going to depend on which size battery you have because there's a great difference in capacity between a 57 watt hour and a 97 watt hour battery, isn't there? Or 56 watt hour, excuse me. Um, and also whether you have the, the full HD or the 4K display. The 4K display is a big consumer of battery power there. So with our high-end model that has the bigger battery, but also the 4K display, it, Dell makes some claims like crazy claims. And that's for the full HD base model with the slower CPU and stuff like that, you know. But realistically speaking, doing light to moderate work, that means, again, Word, Excel, streaming some video on Netflix, that sort of thing, you can get 9 to 10 hours on this if you watch your brightness and keep it at 40% or lower. For something this powerful and this thin and light, that's really impressive. Of course, it does have that huge battery inside. Okay, so where are the gotchas? Where are the things to not like? You know, there aren't many. When the first first uh, version of this XPS 15 design came out, and there were growing pains, just like with the XPS 13, because Intel had great driver problems when it came to Skylake with Windows, and, and a lot of this wasn't really Dell's fault at all. Several early releases of Skylake versions had the same problems, and happily, they've had a year, more than a year, to work those things out now, and the KB Lake generation has been a very minor change in architecture. So that means performance improvements are not so great with KB Lake. But the good news is, is that all the drivers are pretty rock solid, except for that killer Wi-Fi driver. I do like killer and I'm glad Dell's using it because the performance is very good, but their drivers can be kind of eh, dubious lately. But the latest update from Dell takes care of those problems. The fact that the Thunderbolt 3 port has only two PCIe lanes is a little bit of a bummer. I know for those of you who are looking for the ultimate high performance and maybe using an external graphics amplifier to turn this into a gaming laptop, it certainly has the CPU for it. But again, because there are so few Thunderbolt 3 peripherals on the market, it's really hard to test and say how that's going to affect the performance. And they do still have that bi-directional 40 gigabyte per second performance to fall back on, supposedly. HDMI is 1.4, not 2.0. A little bit of bummer there for those of you who are wanting to do some advanced things with your graphics port. But then if you're using the, the Thunderbolt 3 port instead, you can actually get HDMI 2.0 using Dell's own USB-C adapter. So there's a way around that if you need it. So overall, there are not really a lot of gotchas here. And the fact that it's going to cost you a pretty penny if you want a nice configuration, it's one of the nicest Windows laptops. For those of you who need a real powerhouse quad-core laptop with dedicated graphics, uh, for fo folks who are just using Word, Excel, surfing the web, doing WordPress, doing everyday things like that, it's really processing overkill. An HP Spectre X360 15-inch could do the job just fine with a 15-watt dual-core CPU and lower-end dedicated graphics. And that speaks to the competition, too. If you want a traditional design laptop, this is great. But if you want something that turns into a convertible, if you want something you can draw on the screen on, this is not the laptop for you. This is for folks who need serious power. You're doing number crunching, you're doing some CAD work, you're doing a little 3D design at home for yourself or maybe even to augment what it is you do at work during the day which, with a much more powerful workstation. If you're compiling code, this is going to be a lot faster than a dual core machine. So it depends if you need all this too. So there it is, the Dell XPS 15 9560, the 2017 edition, as ever one of the powerhouse laptops to beat because it's so thin, it's so light, it's so classy, it's metal. It's powerful. You have a choice of displays, a variety of price 
points to, to choose from so you don't have to go with the $2,000 model. But there's the rub. Let's face it, y'all want the $2,000 model, which is uh, around the price of our configuration right here. You want all the nice bells and whistles that make the XPS exceptional for a 15-inch laptop that weighs under 2 kilograms for those of you who speak metric or around 4 to 4.5 pounds for those of you who speak imperial measurements. It is certainly going to do well, I think, against the 2016 MacBook Pro, which is kind of underpowered for the money that you're spending. So in terms of looking at a MacBook Pro 15-inch, this one is actually a bargain in terms of power. There you have it. One of the nicest laptops of 2017, out of the gate early. And, you know, it, it really took the world by storm when it came out in the first edition, too, so it's no surprise. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos. And thumbs up if you like this vid.